Hi guys, um, this is Kaylin, and um, not new to YouTube, I've made a few videos, I'm sure you've seen them. Anyways, I've decided that I've wanted to take up vlogging, and what I wanted to vlog about is books. I love to read, I love books, so I figured why not, let's make a vlog about books. Um, quick thing to get off the bat, um, I will be reviewing books that are, I'm going to be reviewing a lot of young adult books, um, I'm also fixing to start tackling the, uh, nature of horror books, I've read a few, I'm wanting to read more, especially ones with zombies, um, I'm obsessed with vampires, I am obsessed with anything supernatural, so you're probably, that's probably what you're going to see. Anyways, to start this off, I only have 10 minutes on my camera, um, I will start off with a young adult book, and it is called The Eternal Ones by Kristen Miller, and it says on the front, what if love refuses to die? Oh, what if love refused to die? Well, let's find out. And just a little warning, if I mess up on a few words, it's not because I can't read, it's just because I can't read out loud. I suck at reading out loud. But, um, I saw this book in a bookstore, and it seemed interesting, so I picked it up. Inside cover, it says, Haven Moore has always lived in the tiny town of Snow City, Tennessee. But for as long as she can remember, Haven has experienced visions of a past life as a girl named Constance, whose love for a boy called Ethan ended in a tragic fire. One day, the sight of notorious playboy Ian Morrow on television brings Haven to her knees. Haven flees to New York to find Ian, and there she is swept up in an epic love affair. And it feels both deeply faded and terribly dangerous. Is Ian her beloved Ethan, or is he her murderer of the past life? Haven asked the members of the powerful and the mysterious Arboro Society to help her unlock the mysteries of reincarnation and discover the secrets hidden in her past lives and loves before all is lost and the cycle begins again. But is the Arrowsboro Society a good thing? And how can Haven know who to trust? Okay. I've never heard of Kristen Miller. Never read anything by her. But picking the book up off the shelf, you know, reading the title, reading the little phrase that's below it, I'm like, hmm, sounds an awful lot like a vampire novel, and I like vampires, so that's what made me pick it up and actually read it. Um, but reading the inside of it, um, to me it kind of comes off as a book that I read, which is also a young adult book called Fallen. I don't have the author's name on me right at hand, but it's about angels and reincarnations and having loves in past lives and, you know, finding them again. Um, this is pretty much kind of like it so far, minus the whole angel thing. Um... The chapters are really short, but it seems to be kind of a lengthy read. The book is 100, not, I mean, 411 pages, and I've only made it to page 151, and that's already chapter 28. So, like I said, the chapters aren't very big or long or whatever, but, um, see, like, this right here is a chapter. Um... It's already chapter 28, and she hasn't even made it to New York City yet. Um, it has a lot of cliches in it. Small town people who are judgy. Um, small town churches that are judgy. Um, when you're different, you're possessed by a demon. Controlling family members that mess everything up. And a gay best friend. Who is a guy. It is very full of cliches. Um, but... I don't know. I'm not really digging it so far, but, you know, I am going to finish it because I spent 20 bucks on it. And, yeah, so when I'm done with it, I will do a review and let you know um, about it. So far, this is well ahead. Um, let me read along pretty quickly. I also bought, this is not a young adult book, it is adult. Very adult, if I can judge by the previous book that he wrote. Um, it is called Handling the Undead, 
it was written in 2005, but it got translated to English last year. Um, it's by a guy named John something something. I am not even going to attempt to read his last name to you because I will butcher it, and I will butcher it horribly, so I'm not going to disgrace him like that. But um, as you can read on the cover, he wrote Let the Right One In, and if any of you remember, Let the Right One In is a movie from Sweden that was made a couple of years ago about a little girl who is a vampire and a little boy who becomes her friend. Such a good movie. Oh my gosh. Such a good movie. It really was. I love vampires. I love horror movies. And, you know, that sated both of my needs in one movie. Um, they also recently, earlier this year, did a American remake of it called Let Me In. I haven't seen that yet. I've been wanting to. I um, probably won't get to until it comes out on DVD because it's not even in theaters around here anymore. In fact, I don't know if it is anywhere. Anyways, moving on. This is by that guy, and I haven't read Left the Right One In, but since it was a, such a good movie and I have heard, like, a lots of good reviews on it, I figure that this book would probably be pretty awesome. So, to read the inside cover. <sighs> Breath. <laughs> the death of someone you love, you can't imagine anything worse, unless they come back. Something particular is happening. While the city is enduring a heat wave, people are finding out that their electric appliances won't stay switched off, and everyone has a blinding headache. Then the terrible news breaks. In the city morgue, the newly dead are walking. David. David has always known that his wife is far, far too good for him. But he never knew how lost he'd be without her until the night she died. Now that she's gone and he's alone, he doesn't know what to do. When he goes to identify her body, she opens her eyes. Across the city, grieving families find themselves able to see their loved ones one last time. But are these creatures really them? How long can this last? And what deadly price will they have to pay for the chance to see their spouse and children one last time? Um, I've only gotten to page 12 in this, and it is... How many pages is it? Let us see. 363. 363 pages. Um, I've only made to page 12 because I've been working and, um, you know, had other projects. Um, but what I've read so far, the prologue is pretty fucking awesome. Because, uh, it's, uh... Well, it shows what I can only assume someone, someone, I'm sorry, like, succumbing to the vampire. Why am I saying vampire? I have vampire in the brain. Anyways, they succumb to the zombie. I don't know if it's a virus or something, but basically I'm pretty sure that it was them turning into a zombie. It's really beautifully written. Um, since it has been translated from Swedish, you know... It kind of doesn't flow well at parts of what I've read so far, but it is really well written, and this guy is just, like, creepy looking with his vivid blue eyes. Um, he looks like a serial killer, which I guess is good when you're writing horror. Um, anyways, this book seems epic. I've only been 12 pages in, but I am excited. I am probably going to finish this book before I finish this book because this has really grabbed my attention this is kind of like me anyways um, I'm going to be doing like you know little introductions to books that I've recently, recently purchased and what I'm going to read but then I'm also going to be reviewing them when I'm done so when I'm done with these two books you'll get a review and before then, you probably, more than likely, will get me introducing more books because I have a habit of buying books before I finish other ones. And then, yeah. Anyways, um, I hope you guys enjoy my vlog. Probably not. Probably will be kind of sucky starting out. But hopefully someday I'll progress and get fans. Anyways, I enjoy reading. And I hope the ones that are watching this enjoy reading too. And... Yeah.
I'm gonna go now. Bye. Ciao. Nice meeting you. Looking forward to this honestly. Bye.